since the youth will not be entreated, his own peril on his forwardness. Is yonder the man? Even he, madam. Alas, he is too young. Yet he looks successfully. How now, daughter and cousin? Are you crept hither to see the wrestling? I may leave, so please you give us leave. Well, you will take little delight in it. I can tell you there are such odds of the man. In pity of the challenger's youth, I would fain dissuade him, but he will not be entreated. Speak to him, lady. See if you can move him. Call him hither, Madame Lebeau. Monsieur the challenger, the princess calls for you. I attend to them with all respect and duty. Young man, have you challenged Charles the wrestler? <laughs> no, fair princess. He is the general challenger. I come but in as others do, to test with him the strength of my youth. Young gentleman, you are too bold for your years. You have seen cruel proof of this man's strength. If you saw yourself with your eyes or knew yourself with your judgment, the fear of your adventure would counsel you to a more equal enterprise. We pray for your own safety to embrace it and give over this attempt. Do, young sir, your reputation shall not therefore be misprized. We will make it our suit to the Duke that the wrestling might not go forward. I beseech you, punish me not with your hard thoughts, wherein I confess me much guilty to deny so fair and excellent ladies anything. Let your fair eyes and gentle wishes go with me to my trial, where if I be foiled, there is but one shamed who is never gracious, if killed, but one dead who is willing to be so. I shall do my friends no wrong, for I have none to lament me, the world no injury, for in it I have nothing. Only in the world do I fill up a place, which I may have better supplied when I have made it empty. The little strength I have, I would it were with you, and mine to eke out hers. Fare you well. Pray have an eye to be deceived in you. Your heart's desires be with you. Come, where's this young galleon that is so desirous to lie with his mother earth? Ready, sir, but his will hath in it a more modest working. Well, you shall try but one fall. No, I warrant your grace. You shall not entreat him to a second that has so mildly persuaded him from a first. You mean to mock me after? You should not have mocked me before. But come your ways. Come on, all right. Let's all right. Thou shouldst have better pleased me with this deed, hadst thou descended from another house. But fare thee well, thou art a gallant youth. I would thou hadst told me of another father. Were I my father, cousin, would I do this? I am more proud to be Sir Rowland's son, his youngest son, and would not change that calling to be adopted heir to Frederick. My father loves Sir Rowland as his soul, and all the world is of my father's mind. Had I before known this young man his son, I should have given tears into entreaties, ere he should thus have ventured. Gentle cousin, let us go and thank him. My father's rough and envious disposition sticks me at heart. <clears throat> Sir, you have well deserved, if you do keep your promises in love. But as surely as you have succeeded all promise, your mistress shall be happy. Gentlemen, wear this for me. One out of suits to fortune that could get more, but that her hand lacks means. Will you go? Cause I fare you well, fair gentlemen. Can I not say I thank you? My better parts are all thrown down, and that which here stands up. He calls us back. My pride fell with my fortune. I'll ask him what he would. <clears throat> Did you call, sir? Sir, you have wrestled well and overthrown more than your enemies. Will you go, cuz? How could you? Fare you well. But passion hangs these weights upon my tongue. 
I cannot speak to her, yet she urged conference. Oh, poor Orlando, thou art overthrown, or Charles or something weaker masters thee. Good sir, I do in friendship counsel you to leave this place, I'll bet you have deserved high commendation, true applause, and love. Yet such is now the Duke's condition that he misconsters all that you have done. The Duke is humorous, what he is indeed more suits you to conceive than I to speak of. Thank you, madam. And pray you, tell me this. Which of the two was daughter of the Duke that was here at the wrestling? Neither his daughter, if we judge by manners. Yet indeed the shorter is his daughter. The other's daughter to the banished Duke, who here detained by her usurping uncle to keep his daughter company, whose loves are dearer than the natural bond of sisters. But I can tell you, as of late, this duke hath taken displeasure against his gentle niece, grounded upon no other argument but the people praise her for her virtues and pity for her for good father's sake. I was much bounded to you. Fare you well. Thus must I, from the smoke into the smother, from tyrant duke unto a tyrant brother. Oh, but heavenly Rosalind, 